Psalm 25 of David In you, my Lord, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come to those who are treacherous without cause. Show me all your ways, Lord. Teach me your, your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember my the sins of my mouth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides them in humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Always of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. For, sake, for the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my inequity, through it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord, will instruct them in ways they should choose? They will spend their days in prosperity, and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear in him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from anguish. Look upon my affliction and distress and take them, take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fierce they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, Take, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. Of course, uh, we've discussed the, the, the Psalms um before about how David is just simply praying for hope. He's praying for God's love. He's praying for the love to descend upon all people and for all of us to open our hearts and recognize the glory and love that is God. So... But today is about pride and forgiveness. And it is kind of interesting that we, that today's reading of, of the psalm does talk about shame and our enemies putting us to, to those shames. So, here it is in, 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 in a nutshell, and then we'll, we'll really talk about it. When we forgive, we have to swallow some pride to forgive. Because forgiveness not only releases the person who 
may have offended us, but more importantly, it releases us from the power of the acts that that person, that that offense had on us. It takes away that power. But until we open ourselves up to the possibility that that power is still holding us, we have to release our pride in that situation. We have to sometimes talk to others speak to others about what happened we have to face the shame of the offense in order to find forgiveness and be released of that power because so many times I hear I hear this from counselors to, who who come to um, to us and talk. I hear this from coaches who come to us and talk. That we try to find ways to avoid talking about the shame, the shame of the offenses, the shame of the sins that not only have we committed but that may have been committed against us. Because we think that by admitting to those, it makes us less than strong. By admitting that we need to talk things out because things have happened to us, that it, we're giving away our power, but the opposite is true. When we swallow a little bit of pride, ask for help, we will be able to forgive. And with that forgiveness, we find strength. We find this strength to teach others Because God, when we swallow that little bit of pride and gain the strength, that strength is God's love. That is the love that God wants all of us to feel. It is the love that connects us back to Him. Forgiveness opens our hearts. It opens our hearts and... It helps heal the wounds so that we can find strength. Strength that comes from love. So, so much of, of that um, holds people back. And it holds us at different levels. Some people, they 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 fall into such a a state of despair that they find themselves in the bottom of the bottomless pit of drugs and alcohol. Others, their marriages fall apart because. They can't find forgiveness and hope. There's several steps that actually lead to this. And when we start to discover the steps in our own lives and heal those things that we, we hold in offense to us, See, we need we need to accept fully and completely in our hearts the love that God puts out for us. And we find when we it's find that always. we find forgiveness. But there's steps that, that, that we need to need to take. 
First, we need to talk about what is happening in our hearts openly and freely with those who are around us. Sometimes that means going to a professional counselor. Sometimes it means going to a clergy person or a minister. Sometimes it just means picking up the phone and calling a family member that you are troubled with and just talking about it. Now, when we talk, there's there's this uh, uh, ama- amazing thing that, that God did to us, and it sounds cliche because it, because it is true. When we speak, our ears shut down. When we are the only ones wanting to converse, we cannot hear others. If we can't hear others, then we can't find guidance. Guidance leads us to the path of love. Guidance leads us to the path of hope, of forgiveness, of so many things that will enrich our lives. When we keep talking and we can't hear those who want to triumph over us. Triumph over over all of us as brothers and sisters. They start to win. Because we can't hear the hope, the whisper of God our Father. God who is our Savior. He was the Savior of David here in the Psalm. He is our Savior. He's the one who teaches us the path. We have to listen. Talk your troubles and then next, listen. Listen to what the other person has to say. Listen to what God says to you through them. See, one thing is true is we're all open vessels for God to use. For God to teach us lessons, he can go through each of us. We have to learn to listen for the whisper of the Lord. I say this a lot that God comes in the form of a whisper instead of a boom. We have to listen and listen close. God isn't going to come to us in some big booming miracle telling us you there this is what you must do. That's not necessarily what is going to happen. The reason why in in the in the stories in the Bible the reason why the burning bush happened that that, that the fish ate someone the, the the all those stories the reason was is because we weren't listening to begin with we weren't listening we weren't using our ears When a personal personal note on listening, 
there's bunnies all around my house and other types of wild animals and squirrels and raccoons, all sorts of little creatures that roam around the property that's around my house. The house I share with my my loving wife. And when I go outside, in some days there's a creature. It could be a, a rabbit. It could be a raccoon. It could be a squirrel. It could be the the crow or the raven. That that it could be. But some days. They, when I look outside for the first time, sometimes there isn't a, a creature. Sometimes there is a creature. Sometimes the creature looks straight at me. And when that happens, I say, good morning, Lord. Thank you for waking me. Thank you for loving me. Because, who knows? Every now and again, maybe I was right. Maybe God was waving good morning using the little creature that passed my door. Maybe it was God waving that I should acknowledge that yes, I am alive and be happy that I am alive. Maybe that's true. Maybe someday it will be true. Maybe one day it was true. The point is, is that we have to listen for the whisper. And when we hear the whisper of the Lord... When it becomes clear, he teaches us the path. He guides us to the path, the path that will lead us through love back to him. When we find that path, amazing things happen. I do mean amazing things happen. When we accept this path, that path leads us to service. Service to, lo to the Lord. Service to humanity. A service that fulfills our purpose. We find that happiness is not outside of us. We find it inside of us. And the happiness cannot be shaken by, by those who want to confront or offend us. That type of happiness can only be found when we listen to the whisper of the Lord. It can only find us when we walk the path that God wants us to walk. We walk the Lord's path of truth for us. The path that leads us back to him. The path that leaves the sins of yesterday. Of today and tomorrow behind us. So. How important is it. To swallow a little taste of pride. And open our hearts to the greatness of forgiveness. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for sending us examples of the path that we should be walking. 
Thank you for the path that leads us back to you, the path that gives us our purpose, our way to serve, that gives us internal happiness. Thank you for that internal happiness, Lord. Thank you for guiding us with your angels, your messengers, however great or small they may be. Thank you for your love and thank you for filling my heart, our hearts, with that love. So, Lord, please re remember Jerry. Please remember the Archer family. Please thank you for your healing hands on Anelia and Nusha. Thank you for all that you do for us. May we be forever grateful.